Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sammy Fryer, licensed realtor in the state of South Carolina. I put this video together because I thought that it would be very helpful for you first time home buyers out there. I know that the idea and the process of buying a house can be overwhelming. And so my hope is that this short, concise, straight to the point video will help you to take the edge off a little bit. And I'm not gonna waste any time. I'm gonna get straight to the meat and bones of everything. So let's set that standard right out of the gate and say this, if you're looking to buy a home, you need to go get a pre-approval. You need to speak with a lender and you need to find out what your buying power is. You need to find out what your budget is. A mistake that a lot of people make is they assume because they make X amount of dollars a year or you know on their salary, that they can afford a house at such and such price. There's a lot of different criteria, moving parts that go into how much you can get approved for a loan for. The biggest being debt to income ratio and not to mention credit, but some people just assume, well, my credit score is this and I make this amount of money, so I should be able to get an X amount of dollars home. You need to let a qualified lender go through your financials, look at all of your data and tell you where you qualify. Now there's a lot that could be said about selecting a lender and that'll just have to be for other videos other times. Some of the stuff we've already touched on a little bit on this channel. Let me go to point two that what I would say is definitely one key criteria that you need to consider and that is select a local lender. If you don't have a local lender, then typically you don't have a lender that has relationship directly with the market that you're shopping in. I can tell you where this could be a problem. As a first time home buyer, there's a good chance that you wouldn't know that oftentimes when deals fall apart, it comes from the financial side. Something went wrong with the buyer's financing. And so when realtors are looking at those contract offers for homes that their sellers have listed, they're looking at who that lender is to see if they see a familiar face. This doesn't have to be somebody that's their buddy or their friend. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm saying is that Local lenders that have a reputation in terms of the way that they do business and their effectiveness and their efficiency matters. And so to make it very practical, and this is just obvious, if you, the buyer, have some satellite lender that nobody's ever heard of in the market that you're shopping in, and then another buyer comes with a local lender with a great reputation that's been doing business in the community for 10, 15, 20 years, whatever the case may be. And the realtor representing that seller sees two identical offers come through, but one is with the lender they've never heard of. One is with the local lender. There's a standard of reputation simply because that person's actually available and in the community. That offer is going to be the more attractive offer every time. And so just to make it very simple for you, why not work with a local lender and then just remove that possible pitfall from your experience altogether? Contact a couple of local realtors. You can talk with them and fill them out before ever even having your credit pulled and see who you feel good about. See who your instincts tell you is somebody you'd like to consider working with. And believe it or not, just that little tip can be very beneficial for you in terms of the smoothness of your experience in your home buying transaction. All right, so next is something that just, I'm going to suggest that you may not see on every video like this on the internet, which is you need to be ready and be certain about your intent to purchase on the front end. And what I mean by that is the type of home, the location, the amount of land, all of those type of things kind of already having done your homework, done your research, given thought to these things and making sure that you are confirmed with what it is that you want in a home. And then secondly, that you really actually do want to buy a home. And then after viewing a home and considering and deciding to potentially put in an offer that you really want a specific home. The reason that I say this is that once you decide to buy a house and you say, I want to put an offer in and get this house, everything starts to move very quickly. So the house shopping experience can be very slow. You can be very patient, take your time, unless you have to move for some reason and wait for the right house, the right circumstance and all of those things. But regardless of the factors that could lead you to this point, once you get to the point to where you have to buy, everything is going to happen fast. An offer is going to be put together, signed and sent over, and then everything starts to move very rapidly that we're about to go through after that. And it's totally fine, it's all normal, it is the process. But you not being certain that this is what you want is gonna cause you undue and unnecessary 
anxiety during the process that you or the people close to you don't want you to deal with. So the way to avoid that is to be confident and sure and what you want. And then once that process is to start, you're ready to go through that process to go and secure that home on closing day. All right, so those are a couple of the preliminary things. Now let's just shoot quickly through what the process is gonna look like. For one, you're gonna be getting frequent communication from multiple people during the process. So you've committed, you've made your mind up, you're excited, you're ready to buy a house, you get an offer in and the offer gets accepted. Your realtor is gonna work with you to put together the right offer that makes the most sense in your specific situation. That offer has been submitted and accepted and now all of the fun starts. For one, your lender is going to be communicating with you frequently. There's gonna be a lot of documents and a lot of verifications that they're going to need. There's gonna be things that they're gonna need signatures on and they're going to be primarily email you and requesting those things. It helps you out to respond promptly and to get those things knocked out. 99% of things these days can be docu-signed right there on your cell phone when you open the email. So especially if you're not a person that frequently communicates through email, make sure that you've prepared yourself mentally that there's going to be a lot of communication during this process coming through email and your prompt responses are going to help out a lot in ensuring the smoothness of your transaction. The attorney's office that's going to be handling your transaction and your closing is going to be contacting you. There's going to be some things that they may need signed, also some scheduling things that they'll do in terms of scheduling your closing date and time. Plus you'll be copied in the email communications and threads that are going back and forth from the attorney and your realtor. And so it'll be helpful for you to keep an eye on those just so you can be kept in the loop of what's going on. They'll also send you things like instructions if you need to wire money over to the office or something like that. And we're gonna talk about money here in a second because there are upfront costs in buying a house that you need to be prepared for. Thirdly is what probably would be the obvious one. Your realtor is gonna be in constant communication and contact with you throughout this process. Not only are there going to be things that they need from you, but they also are going to be sending things your way that have to be signed. There's all kinds of disclosures, sometimes various affidavits, different things that the attorneys are going to request, that the lender is going to request, that the state requires, that the National Association of Realtors requires. There's various documents that are going to need to be signed, but also they're going to be talking you through the process. So one of the key things that your realtor is going to do is order all of your inspections that are needed. They're going to call and schedule inspections, estimates, all of those things that need to be done, they'll be coordinating that and then they'll be bringing that information back to you to review it with you to decide whatever the next appropriate course of action is. In some cases, negotiations or renegotiations are needed after inspections turn up various things with the house. And so they're gonna be walking you through that and then actually conducting those negotiations with the realtor that's on the other side of the transaction on the seller side. So you are gonna have a lot of contact with them. A lot of people just prefer to text most things throughout the transaction process can be communicated by email or text. However, be prepared to take some phone calls because some things just need to be communicated through conversation. And your realtor also hopefully will be just contacting you here and there throughout the process to make sure that you have everything that you need, that you are being set up for everything that needs to be done once you move into the house, i.e. connecting utilities, where to go, trash service, et cetera. Now your realtor and your lender will be in communication frequently during the process. This is another advantage going back to having a local lender and somebody that realtors in your area are at least aware of, if not already familiar with working with. So having a good, efficient, communicative realtor is gonna be very helpful in your process. Next is you need to get insurance on the home. So once your home goes under contract, shortly thereafter is gonna be a time that you need to start calling. Perhaps you already do business with a local insurance agency, maybe not, but whatever the case may be, it's gonna be the time to start getting quotes and figuring out who you're going to have your home insurance with because you're gonna to wanna to get that done prior to closing day. And then coming down to the end here, really your lender will explain this more. And if you're already moving into the home buying process or you're about to, once you start to conduct those interviews with local lenders, hopefully, make sure that you talk through this with them so that they can explain it in greater detail. For the sake of the shortness of this video, I'm just gonna say, don't make big financial moves once you lock in a pre-approval. Drastic shifts in the amount of money that's in your accounts or things that you put on credit, 
can negatively impact your pre-approval amount. It could knock you out of an entire price bracket to where you can't even afford a certain home you may have had your eye on. So speak with your local lender, especially once they've put eyes on your financial situation and just make sure that you understand where your parameters and boundaries are and how you need to treat your accounts for the next 30 to 45 days because that's going to be a really big deal. And now with that being said, a very important thing that you need to understand about buying a home is there are going to be some upfront costs that you need to be prepared for. For one, your lender is most likely going to require an appraisal and that is typically going to be an upfront cost. And that's usually, and I have to give a ballpark because anybody anywhere in the world could be watching this video and things could be different in your region or area. But a nice safe number to say is you need to be prepared to spend about $600 on an appraisal. Could be less, could be more. You're probably going to have a termite inspection done, especially if you're here in South Carolina or a wood inspection on the foundation of the house in the wood, moisture, water intrusion, termites, that kind of thing. And also, we certainly are going to recommend that you have a home inspection done. Between those two inspections, you're looking at about another five to $600. Also, when you drew your offer up, there was an earnest money amount that was offered and that really could range. It could be any amount, but whatever amount of money that you offered as your earnest money deposit, that money is going to have to be deposited very early in the transaction process. In some cases, the day that the offer is signed is what's going to be requested. You're going to need to have that amount of cash at your disposal also to turn into whoever the escrow holding agent is for that transaction. So you could be upwards of at least $1,200 up to maybe two, three, four, five thousand, depending on, of course, the earnest money in upfront cost or upfront money that you're going to need to have available to purchase a home. I would say a good rule of thumb for the average home buyer, particularly in our area, at least $2,000 in cash sitting to the side that you can have at your disposal is probably a relatively good number to kind of have in your mind. And then the last couple of things are simple. The average transaction time length is going to take about 30 to 45 days, usually 30 days to close is going to be about the norm. Some can be 45, depending on the type of loan that you have and maybe very specific circumstances. So you can factor in that this process is going to be about a month. And that may seem like a long period of time, but with all the things that need to be done and the way that the flow of the home buying transaction process is, it goes by very quickly. Before closing, you're entitled to a final walkthrough if you want to do so. So you need to let your realtor know, hey, you know, 24, 48 hours before closing, especially if there were certain repairs that need to be done or something like that, to say that I want to do a final walkthrough of the house. And then finally, on closing day, you need to be prepared to have a couple of forms of identification on you. You should be aware by this point of the exact amount of money that you need to bring in the form of a check, or perhaps you already wired the money prior to closing day. Some attorney's offices won't take a check over a certain amount of money. So you should have that ironed out by the time that you get to closing day. Closing should be relatively straightforward. You've already taken care of everything. All of these things have been done coming up to closing. The attorney will go over title, deed, type of ownership, all the financials. They'll go over all these things. You'll sign a stack of paperwork unless you did some e-sign prior to closing, which I've seen people are doing now, which really makes the actual closing go a lot faster. But basically the attorney is gonna go over everything that's going on and what you're looking at moving forward. And you will essentially sign your way into the ownership of that property and that's it. You should get the key that day. In some cases, it could be up to the next day if there's some filing that has to be done perhaps. And from what I understand in other parts of the country, that may be more frequent than it is here in our area. Usually in our area, you expect to get the key the day of closing. One final thing that I say and your realtor and the attorney will go over this with you prior to closing and the attorney on closing day, is you're gonna to wanna to make sure that at least in South Carolina, you switch your home over to, or your home ownership over to primary residence if it is gonna be your primary residence. In fact, you wanna make sure that you go ahead and get that knocked out pretty much as quickly as you can because that's gonna affect your tax bill very significantly. I mean, it's gonna be two to three times less. So you're usually talking about thousands of dollars by getting your home claimed or filed at the tax assessor's office as primary residence. The way you do this is very simple. You need to go to your local DMV in whatever area in the state 
that you're in. And I don't know exactly how other states work, so I'm sure that it's very similar in most other states, but I'm speaking specifically for South Carolina now. Go to the DMV, get a new license and a new registration and voter's registration, if applicable, reflecting the new address of the new property. And then you're going to submit that to the tax assessor's office and file your application for primary residence. That usually turns around pretty quick and then you'll be good to go. But you definitely want to make sure you do that because if you don't, when that next tax bill comes around, it's going to be much higher than what you were probably expecting. And that's going to be the reason why. But again, your realtor will remind you of that probably a few times before and after closing. And the attorney is usually going to bring that up on closing day and give you some written instructions as well. So look, in a nutshell, this is the process. If you're a first time home buyer and you click this video and you were wondering, maybe I would mention different programs. There's various programs for first time home buyers. Your lender will go over all that with you. I cannot stress enough. Please speak to a lender doesn't have to be local. I'm recommending and many other realtors would also, but please speak to a lender before getting too deep into your home search because there's all kinds of information that you're going to need to have. So I can't stress enough how important it is and how much relief it's going to take off of your anxiety levels to go ahead and start having some conversations with a good lender. Also, a lot of the things that we went through when you start having your initial conversations with your realtor, they can unpack a lot of these things and get into further detail. I just wanted to put together a short video that I could make available to first time home buyers. I hope that you found this helpful. If you did, please give the video a like. If you value this kind of content, make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified of future videos that we drop that are related to everything real estate and beyond in the state of South Carolina and beyond. And with that being said, if you would like to speak to a realtor and you have any questions or would like to start your own home buying or selling process, all of my contact information and our office contact information is down in the description of this video. You can reach out to me and we can schedule your complimentary consultation today. And with that being said, I look forward to speaking with you. I wish you all the best in your real estate endeavors. In the meantime, y'all take care and we'll see you on the next one.